quirky, out of place thought bubbles. Wise telepathic chihuahua. Awkwardly breaking the fourth wall to add exposition. Biden slamming into the car. Pouring your soul to a stranger over cheerful Disney music. My Son Hunter is a 2022 film directed by Robert Davey, you know, this guy from Die Hard, Goonies, and uh, License to Kill. And since the new presidential election is coming up in the US, I thought it would be a fun idea to watch this movie. You guys just can't seem to, to organize an election without Trump these days. It's third time in a row. When is this gonna end? Well, I'm not the one to talk. Our election is also coming up. It's gonna be in March of 2024 and we're gonna be re-electing Putin for the gazillionth time. Not only that, our terms are six years, not four years like in, you know, normal countries. Wouldn't change that thanks to, you know, Mr. P is gonna be president for another th six years for the third time. Maybe he's just trying to collect three sixes and summon Cthulhu and, you know, end this all already. Well, to be honest, calling it a movie would be a great exaggeration. It's more of a YouTube skit, hour and a half long YouTube skit. It's time to fucking party! So, welcome to my dungeon again. Happy to see ya. I've gathered you all to talk about my son Hunter. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I am sorry. The movie begins with a news report from a mostly peaceful BLM protest where two white girls by Kay and this girls <laughs> cannot explain why they're there. It's it's like they, they learned their lines from a textbook, but they forgot everything and they only memorized the word equality. How are they all feeling? No, justice, no! Great. Why would you ask white folks what they feel at a BLM protest, by the way? Who gives a shit what they feel? And uh, of course, they gotta hone in how the leftists love to channel their inner therapist and just ask how are you feeling all the time. Then the girls go to some kind of bush to discuss what they just uh, saw and what they just made a video of and they're like arguing whether or not they should post it because it actually shows that those uh, protests aren't actually peaceful. They're showing that they're being deceitful like liberal people are. And then they say, We choose truth over facts. Can anyone explain this to me? Why the fuck does that mean? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Remember those times when you're with your socially aware friend and you're finishing your conversation about these important political and social issues by saying, we're on the right side of history. We're on the right side of history. And then your friend repeats it back. Right side of history. It's actually a part of my morning routine when I do positive affirmations in the mirror, like a lunatic, and I say, I am on the right side of history. And if you say it three times, you might actually summon MLK or even like Rosa Parks. So Hunter's at the club, partying it up, doing lines, looking at girls, high-fiving everyone, like the cool guy, but he's not because he's depraved and he's a drug addict and he sleeps with sex workers. Boo, Donald would never. Respectful Republican men would, you know, sit and like read the latest memoir from Trump or something, not stare at naked women. How ungodly of you. Then we see uh, her name is Kitty. Her name is actually Grace, but she goes by Kay in this, I don't know, it's the, it looks like a strip club. And she's, she's sitting in her dressing room and she looks in the mirror. By the way, they break the fourth wall all the fucking time. It's annoying. She looks at, uh, at the camera through the mirror and says, 
don't judge me. I'm doing that to pay off my student loans. I mean, obviously it's your fault that you have student loans. Why weren't you born in like a wealthier family? And of course the, the, the dancer is a liberal because, well, right-wing lady would not step inside a strip club. The only thing is missing is daddy issues. Oh wait. I don't give a shit about my dad. Then through a series of poorly made graphics that uh, the director's seven-year-old child probably drew in the paint, we see how H Hunter's heart reacts to all the stimuli until he sees a dog. Mind you, it's a big party, a shit ton of people. He sees a dog and he starts to have a telepathic conversation with the sad dog and the dog tells him that all these people don't actually appreciate him they're just using him and he listens and he throws everyone out for some reason kitty the the blonde chick she stays behind like this is never explained he he, he told everyone to get out why did she stay behind and why was that okay and they go to get more drugs because depravity they go to this like very sketchy area i mean i don't know i'm not from like a wealthy privileged upbringing so i, I don't know how that works in the, the fancy rich people world but i feel like you would have better ways of procuring drugs rather than like literally going to those neighborhoods can't you just call someone they'll just bring it to you where am i delusional so they come back and then hunter opens up to this complete stranger and starts uh talking about his childhood how he lost his mom and his little sister and then when he was an adult he also lost his brother which is all true but first of all it's just weird that he's sharing uh, this all and also feels very insensitive because all these things are true and he talked about it in his book and his memoir he had nothing to do with the film so a lot of it is the speculation or exaggeration and it's just it just feels very invasive and speculative as i said the movie breaks the fourth wall all the time so if you're ever lost in this convoluted story of international espionage and uh, corruption you see billy mumphrey was a simple country boy some might say a cockeyed optimist who got caught up in the dirty game of world diplomacy and international intrigue. Oh, we have our proxy to the stories, this um, scary looking lady whose job is it to like over explain things throughout the film. Like father, like son. And like roll her eyes at both Biden's Joe and Hunter. And also uh, to just jump in with like additional information that has nothing to do with the film. His favorite flavor, chocolate chip. CNN did an in-depth report on it. Oh, and one more thing. It's a little off topic, but Epstein didn't kill himself. So Joe Biden comes to visit his son to talk about the laptop gate. When they meet outside of Hunter's house, or it's, it's a hotel, in case you lived on Mars for the last two decades, Joe Biden begins to give a lot of exposition. It's my fourth time running for the office. It's been 120 years in the Senate, a bunch of years as vice president. Explain who he is and what he wants and, you know, which is a, like, if people are watching this film, they know who Biden is, right? Who the fuck doesn't know who Biden is? So Hunter goes to Joe Biden's car and they start discussing the, the, the laptop gate. And meanwhile, Kitty is, oh, Grace, I'm gonna call her Grace, Kitty is, sounds a little weird to me I don't know. grace she is, she stays behind and she overheard that it's hunter biden she didn't know who that was before and she overheard that he was you know the son of joe biden and she started googling him well not googling she she does her research in the gigio 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 some of like that but since evil leftists removed all negative information concerning biden on the internet she can't find anything she literally googles hunter biden scandal and finds no results no relevant results let's see what happens if i google uh, i mean g g gives you the same search Huh. 
we segue back to the car where or we learn how stupid Joe Biden is. We're living in a world of that uh, that thing. What do they call it? Um, I'm with her. Oh, look at him misremembering me too. And it's actually making a much harder sentence instead. <laughs> Something that Trump would never do, right? He would never misremember, mislabel, or misspeak, or just be plain stupid. The wall, the barrier, whatever you want to call it, it's okay with me. They can name it whatever they can name it, peaches. No, never. Donald would never. And then Joe talks about the fine times he spent with Nelson Mandela for some reason. He was a bad dude. No joke. He wouldn't wear a bathing cap in the pool, so I, <laughs> I faced him down with a six-foot chain. But wait, what if people watching this movie actually believe the lies that Joe and Hunters are telling? They'll be terrible. No, don't worry. Um, whenever they tell a lie, the giant fact check bat signal flashes across their faces and then we learn the actual truth. I mean facts. There's a distinction. And they show their dealings in Ukraine. It's a lot of horse shit. What else? So after after we learned all this, you know, very serious, corrupt, scandalous facts about the Biden family and how much money they made in Ukraine, we see how funny and, and, and goofy Biden is because he stumbles and he just smashes his head against the car because he missed the door excuse me what back to the mansion grace you know she she's a woman and you know how our uh, womanly brains are simply incapable of deciphering complex information and we need male help so this this security guy i don't know who he is his name's tyron he comes over from I, I don't know, he was like hiding in the closet this whole time. He comes over and tells uh, Grace to use an alternative search engine, not the Gigio, some other search engine, right-wing approved search engine. By this time, it's like we're like half through the movie and you know, like you watch the movie for like an hour and you were too immersed. Like you were just too deep in the story, you were like, empathize with the characters you understand you're like you know having this immersive experience you're like uh, uh, it's too much it's just too much so there's an intermission where biden and hunter are on some sort of stage and all here they are ukrainian and russian mafia partners are behind in this like very theatrical pose and dramatic theatrical light and they're dancing so ukraine ukrainian Corruption scandals is uh, is over. Now we learn the true depravity of Hunter Biden. The true, disgusting, the most embarrassing thing a man can ever do. It turns out uh, that he's an artist, a male artist. You never take my ambition seriously like you did with Bo. Because Bo wanted to change the world. You want to finger paint. This is so weak and unmasculine. I hope you don't have an, like a male artist in your family. There is nothing worse than that. <clears throat> well, I'm a woman. I'm allowed. They talk for a little while. Joe splits and Hunter goes back to Grace and she tells him that she knows who he is and that she gigiot him. They like have sex and he, he he tells her that he's in love with her or he loves her. They met yesterday and he, and he proposes and she declines and then, then, then they're shown how that he's like he's very rude to the service this bad boy comes comes up and tells him that they should check out because they left the room in uh, terrible conditions and he's just throwing money at him unlike unlike good christian republicans who are always so nice and considerate of other people's feelings can you imagine trump doing that <laughs> i can't even i can't even say that with a serious face i don't care how sick you are I don't care if you just came back from the doctor 
and he gave you the worst possible prognosis, meaning it's over. Hang out till November 8th. Get out and vote. Then the next topic of the conversation comes up and it is China. Uh, this actually is the only part of the whole movie that is not a lot of crap. So he tells the story how he met this Chinese a guy affiliated with a party or with a bird fetish. What the fuck is a bird fetish? My fetish. And they make a deal and uh, yeah, Biden gets a shit ton of money. At this point, this is the first time where Grace is like, you know, my family lived in China for 10 years. I know how horrible Chinese government is to its citizens, which again, she is not wrong. China is pretty bad, to say the least. And they talk about concentration camps, also accurate. The, the, the face recognition technology. There are so many cameras right now in China. There's, there's one camera pro seven citizens, for seven people. And considering that China has, what, 1.3 billion or something? It, it should, it's a shit ton of cameras. So 100% nothing nothing wrong with what she's saying. But the, the, the thing is that she's sitting on her high horse saying that as if Republicans don't do that. Like the United States works with uh, Iran, Venezuela, China, a, a, a lot of countries that violate human rights uh, it also used to work with russia before the war started a lot of countries that are that consistently violate human rights but unfortunately in our capitalist society we prioritize a profit over people so it is not biden being bad it is everyone being bad including biden and talking about human rights violations Dude, you live in America. You just banned abortions in 2022. Abortions are, are legal almost everywhere, except for like a few bad apples here and there. Abortions are legal in Russia. Let that sink in. We've outlawed gay relationships, not just gay marriage, just, gay, just being gay is against the law. But abortions are still legal. So anyways, Grace gets fed up with his lies and with his depravity, with his bullshit, and she gets up and she's like, I'm gonna go. And he's like, no, I love you, stay. Again, they met yesterday. Maybe drugs do that to you, I don't know. And his dad calls him and uh, on the phone, even though he's like a 50 year old man at this point, he behaves like a toddler. Like, yo, no daddy, yes daddy, yo daddy, yes daddy. He says, I love you dad. And then he da his dad hangs up without saying anything in return or something. And then he can he hangs up too and he says, Trump is getting impeached. Hooray, my story will be buried in this in this information, right? Like no one will remember about my laptop because of Trump impeachment story. Well, you haven't forgotten. Good for you guys, good for you. And by the way, it's two laptops <laughs> that they mentioned. He says it twice to his dad. Actually, it's... Um... Two laptops. Two laptops. Is it like an editing error? I don't know. Which I, I, I looked it up. I couldn't find anything about the possibility of there being a second laptop. I have no idea where it came from. But honestly, who cares? So Grace leaves and as she goes outside, she's approached by Tyron, who gives her a recording device. And at that point, I thought that he gave it to her like for the future. Like it's a, he just gifted her a recording device. But then she goes into the car and she turns it on and the whole conversation that they've just had is on it. So Tyron must have been recording them this entire time and she's completely chill about it. I mean, they've been having sex. She's also been talking about her past, her dad, her time in China. She's been sharing some stuff too. Girl, how are you not freaked out by this? This random guy has been eavesdropping on you this entire time. So anyway, she gets into the car. She calls her dad. Her dad's a lawyer, by the way. 
which is used as a bad thing in this movie. Like, all liberals think that lawyers are bad or something? I don't know. Uh, she calls her dad, who is actually, who is being like super nice and super supportive. So it's like, are you alluding to the fact that it is her fault? They, they don't have a good relationship? Because, I mean, they aren't bad dads, they are bad daughters. He's being like a super nice, super supportive guy. And she asked him, well, in like abstract terms, whether or not he should release the truth, or oh, sorry, the, the facts. He, he, he says that, uh, well, I, I would release it because it's the truth needs to be heard, blah, blah, blah. Wait, the truth? He says the truth. Liberal. Liberal. And uh, she calls a journalist she knows from the Post, and uh, he refuses to publish the story. He accuses her of being pro-Trump. Not everyone who doesn't like Biden is pro-Trump. Nobody likes Biden, that's the truth. Like, I, I never met a liberal American who's like, yes, Biden is amazing. Unfortunately, that's what the party gave them. They didn't really give them a choice. It's either Trump or Biden. The first time was Hillary or, Bi or, or Trump. Also, not the best candidate. That's why she lost, because people hate Hillary. People hate Biden, but not because they're liberal, just because they're not the best representation of the liberal party. So now uh, a fever dream <laughs> begins where she posts this recording herself and she gets all these negative comments just being accused of being a pro-Trumpist or a slut for some reason and Giuliani reaches out to her and he's like, I'm interested in your story, let's talk and they talk and then and then Hunter gets arrested and then Trump wins and she's like well sometimes the reality you know not everything you want to happen happens and blah 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 and she the movie ends with her reuniting with her dad and you know living happily ever after so look our politicians for the most case have real questionable morals a lot of them are have narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies they prioritize benefits and profit and political advancements over people yeah and that's that's true for most countries is it possible that hunter was involved in some criminal activities maybe i don't know there is no irrefutable proof of that that's for sure but i wouldn't put it past him like i don't know the dude plus drugs do make you make the worst decisions i mean like consistent drug abuse obviously but this is not a movie this is not a movie that tries to analyze the situation tries to understand the complexity of american political arena trying to understand how the uh, united states became so polarized and the, the, the relationship between uh, the US and Russia and Ukraine and China, which is again, very complex, very layered. It actually would be a good idea if it was professionally done, not a, by a five-year-old with, with an access to camera. It's, it's a laughable amateur YouTube video with, with terrible graphics, with terrible writing, with one-dimensional characters. And, and just a, a shit ton of speculation. Also accompanied by this Disney-like music, which just clashes with a, with a story, makes no sense. The, the breaking the fourth wall is awkward and completely, completely unnecessary. The graphics on the screen, again, completely unnecessary. It just takes you out of the movie and makes it a worse movie than it could have been. Over expositioning every single thing that's going on. Also, a lot of speculation about Biden's private life, which is just, it's just shitty, especially considering that these are true things that happened to him. Even if you are a Republican, you, you I would hope so, can't empathize with a guy who lost his entire family. Can you be a little more sensitive around these very, very personal and uh, traumatizing events where, yeah, Republicans aren't, aren't allowed to have feelings because uh, facts don't care about your feelings. They're just the whole 
bunch of people with no feelings and no emotions who don't go through the tough stuff who don't have any problems anyways don't watch the movie please vote if you are a holder of american citizenship don't let trump win again i can't i can't i just if he wins again i can't do this anymore i'm just Ugh, the couple of years have been so bad. I just can't. I can't. I don't. Mm, no, no. And go ask your dog for telepathic advice. Maybe, maybe they know more than you think.